If you're just starting out in whiskey and you're feeling a little overwhelmed with the whole thing, I have a few beginner tips for you that I wish I knew when I started my journey that hopefully will help you out and navigate the whole world of whiskey. Hello and welcome to Lacorius George. My name is George and today I'm going to be guiding all of you through three beginner tips that I have that I wish I knew sooner in my whiskey journey that I'm hoping will help all of you out there who might be starting and getting a little bit confused with everything that's there. Now there's a whole lot of tips I could have put on this list, but when I got to thinking about it, I thought, what are a few things that I really wish I knew when I was going to buy that first bottle or two of whiskey? So if I'm gonna spend some money on something, am I just rolling the dice when I'm going into the liquor store? Am I asking for recommendations? What would I have wished I'd known when I first went in? This is by no means a complete list, but I'm just hoping it's gonna help somebody out there who might be beginning their journey. So the first tip that I have that I wish I knew a little bit sooner when I was starting my whiskey journey is understanding the mash bill of a whiskey. So what exactly is the mash bill? Well, the mash bill is simply just a list of grains that were used in the distillation process when they were making that spirit. So why do I think the mash bill is so important? Well, it's one of the major components in what gives a whiskey its flavor profile. Now, there's a lot of other factors that go into the flavor profile of whiskey, so mash bill isn't the only thing, but it's obviously going to be a big factor of it and something that's easy enough to start out with when you're looking at the bottle. Generally, in the mash bill, you're going to see the big four grains. So you're going to see corn, you're going to see wheat, you're going to see malted barley, and you're going to see rye. Now, what you're going to find is most bottles of whiskey out there don't specify exactly what that mash bill is. So what do you do in that situation? Well, this is where a little bit of research ahead of time can come in handy. Kind of understanding the flavors that those four major grains bring along with them can help you out when you go and you're looking at a bottle of whiskey. So something like a bottle of bourbon, which has to be at least 51% corn, you know that's gonna be on the sweeter side. Something like a scotch, which has to be malted barley. So you're gonna get much more of that malted flavor to it, that brightiness, kind of a yeasty flavor, you know, versus that super sweet end of things. Compare that next to something like a rye whiskey or something that has a high rye content in the mash bill, you're gonna get a lot more spice out of that. So having a basic understanding of what those four major grains bring along to the flavor profile with them is gonna help you a lot when you're navigating around. Now, the other thing you can do if you're completely stuck and you've done a lot of research and still don't know is go and ask the people who work at the liquor store. I know a lot of the liquor stores around me and I'm gonna say it probably all across the world, these people are super friendly. They know their stuff. They're gonna be able to help you pick something out. Tell them the different flavors that you like. They'll guide you along the way. And even ask about the mash bill. Maybe they know some stuff that's not on the bottle. Get yourself a little information and learn a little bit more while you're at it. All right, everyone. Let me take a quick second to say that if you're liking the video so far, please hit the like button down below. It gives me a little feedback to understand that you guys are liking what you're seeing. Helps me understand the types of stuff that you guys wanna see in the future. While you're at it, consider hitting that subscribe button as well. That way, you don't miss any of the content I put out in the future, and you can stay up to date with the latest things that I'm putting out there. Okay, so the second tip that I have for everyone that I wish I understood a little bit sooner was the whole whiskey maturation process. So after whiskey is distilled, it is put into wooden barrels or casks for a certain amount of time, depending on the whiskey, and then it is taken from that cask once it's done aging and bottled for all of us to enjoy. Now on a basic level, it sounds pretty simple. You put whiskey into a wooden barrel, you let it sit for a while and you take it out. But the actuality is that whiskey maturing has a very big influence on how that whiskey is going to taste when it comes out of the barrel. The time the whiskey spends in the barrel itself, the type of wood the barrel is made out of, the liquid that may or may not have been in the barrel before the whiskey was poured in there, the temperature at which that barrel is stored, so all of these factors go into how the whiskey ends up tasting when it comes out of the cask itself. So it turns out that maturing whiskey is much more of an art than it looks like on the surface. So I don't think you need to know all the ins and outs of whiskey maturation before you go in to buy a bottle of whiskey. But what I think would be helpful if I had known beforehand is really some of the basics of how that barrel has an effect on the flavor of the whiskey. You have something like this, which is a rye whiskey that was originally in a new charred oak barrels that was finished in a cognac barrel. So you get a little bit of a different flavor profile to it. Or something like this, which is a scotch whiskey that you can see it has an initial cask and a finished cask to it. So it's two different casks there that, you know, it was initially aged in and then it finished itself in a secondary cask. And as I mentioned, this is really going to change the flavor profiles on it. So just looking and seeing how the whiskey itself was matured and aged 
can give you a good sense of what the flavor profile coming out of it might be. And again, whether or not it fits into the wheelhouse is something you're gonna like. So my third and final tip is one that I really wish I understood. And that is that your palette is going to change as time goes on. Now you might be thinking, George, this is pretty simple. Yes, obviously your palette changes. But what I don't think I realized at the beginning was just how drastically it can change even from day to day. There's probably some whiskeys I tried at the very beginning of getting into whiskey that I had a sip or two and was like, this isn't for me, that I ended up revisiting three or four months later and realized, hey, you know what? I actually do like this, I enjoy it. So what I would say is don't write off a whiskey necessarily if the first time you taste it, it wasn't that great to you. Try it again in a month, a year, let some time pass before you have another taste of it. And who knows, maybe it still doesn't taste good to you. You can put it on your shelf, save it for when people come over, maybe they're gonna like it, or maybe it does actually taste good to you now. The other thing I didn't quite understand as much is how much an effect the food you have during the day has on your palate as well. So if you have something spicy for lunch, that could change the way that your whiskey tastes later on in the night. It all just depends. What I would say too is that when you're first starting out and tasting whiskey, don't be discouraged if you're reading somebody's tasting notes on a particular whiskey and you try it yourself and you don't taste any of that and it tastes completely different. The thing I've realized is that your palate starts to adapt the more you taste whiskey. When I really first started to get into whiskey, I would just drink a bourbon. I would think it tastes like bourbon. I'd have a scotch, it tastes like a scotch. I wouldn't be able to really pull out any sort of those notes and things that you read either online or on the back of the bottle even. You really just have to give yourself time to develop that palate a little bit, try different whiskeys. Eventually you'll start to get some of those notes coming out and you'll get some of those nuances that you taste in the whiskey itself. Even now where I am far from being an expert and even having an experienced palate, I can at least still tell that from where I started to where I am now, I'm able to pull out some of those nuances and the flavors that are, I'm getting and actually reading on the back of the bottle and hearing other people talk about when they have some of these whiskeys. So definitely give yourself time, give yourself a little grace, take it easy, and just enjoy the whiskey for what it is. The last thing I would say too, when it comes to tasting notes and reading everything that other people are tasting through out of whiskey, you have to understand that when you taste a whiskey, you're just recalling what your brain knows already. So for instance, if you've never tasted something that is written in that tasting note, there is no way that you're gonna be able to taste it when you drink that whiskey, right? Think about it. If I've never had a Sultana, and I have no idea what a Sultana tastes like, there's no way that I'm gonna be able to pick up a Sultana when I taste one of these whiskeys. In fact, I even had to look up what a Sultana was just so I could actually talk about it on this video here. So believe me, if you've never tasted something before, you're not gonna be able to pull it out in one of the tasting notes. And if you're a rather simple eater like I am sometimes, there's just gonna be things you can't taste and it's okay, but you're gonna have a completely different experience than somebody else is going to have. And that's the beautiful thing with whiskey is that we can all drink the same thing. We're all gonna experience it differently and it's what makes whiskey such a wonderful thing. So those are my three beginner tips that I wish I knew when I started my whiskey journey. I'm hoping they bring you guys plenty of value and that you're able to find something that helps you out along the way. If you found these tips to be helpful, let me know down in the comments. And if you're a little bit more advanced on your journey, throw something down there that you think would be helpful for someone who's beginning their journey that you wish you knew when you started yours. So until next time, everyone, stay curious and cheers.